überall gedrückt, wo ich drücken muss. Und wahrscheinlich sind wir schon live, Shelia. Uh, ja. Ich höre dich und ich sehe dich und ich freue mich. So, now I have to change. Oh, yeah, we're doing English. <laughs> I'm glad you said something, Lena, because I know. <laughs> I know. So, yeah, today it's English, it's cookies. I've got the cookies. Yeah, and I have the candy canes. Mm. Actually, it's not exactly what's in the title, cookies, uh, coffee and conversations, but yeah. it doesn't matter. It's sweets. It it's about hanging, um, hanging out together. You would you say that? Yeah, hanging out mm. together. Yeah. yeah, and <sighs> we just wanted to have this light feeling and like Christmassy feeling and being together without being together. So um, kind of a virtual uh, gathering in a way. Exactly. Yeah. And the, the topic today is freedom and hope. And I mean, I felt like Miss Universe, you know, what, what is your dream? Oh. Weltfrieden, world, uh, peace. world <laughs> peace, and it's about this kind of freedom and hope, but it's also about the everyday feeling of, oh, to have more peace of mind and to feel more relaxed and out of this feeling to have some hope. Um, and kind of this resilient thing that is not a part of the outside world, but mm. of the inside world. Yeah. And we have three beautiful guests that each of them brings another component to, mm. to that, I think. And it will be Orit Eschel at the beginning and then from Germany and original from Israel. Mm -hmm. And after that, Robin Tuffin will be with us, it's a dear colleague and friend of Shelia as well. And at the end, our beloved Dr. Dicken Bettinger. Mm -hmm. And I'm really looking forward to all of these conversations, yeah. Yeah, me too. And us, <laughs> Shelia yeah. Stevens. <laughs> yeah, and Leah, or Leah and Shelia, as you see on the page, yeah. Yeah, I'm looking forward to everybody. Robin, Robin is going to be coming to us from Brazil today, from Sao Paulo. And um, Dickon is on, over on the Washington oh. side of the United States, mm -hmm. right? Over on the, the Northwest Coast. And so we've got a lot of international guests today. And I'm particularly excited, Leah, because um, my friends and my family members from the United States have an opportunity to watch the video, whether it's live yeah. or whether they see it afterwards. And that means a lot to me because mm -hmm. over the last, um, you know, over 11 years, almost 12 years now that I've been doing the work that I do, everything's been mm -hmm. in German and very little only in English. And it's just um, an honor and a privilege to have them watch and um, yeah, just be with me a little bit in this way and in the work that we do together, Leah. So mm. that's super cool. That's great. Mm. Yeah, and, and it's beautiful that you have them with you and sharing this kind of special conversations, you know? Yeah. yeah everyday but and special in a way yeah it's true for me it's going to be quite a, <laughs> a difficult thing because it's evening um in switzerland in zurich and uh, probably a few of you already know when i we had the interviews from my my secret life mm. and actually my secret life is available again 
the yeah. summit um, and we really want to share it with the world again yeah and it's possible to just click and um, have the first interviews with our lovely guest should I say a few words about the My Secret Life? Yeah, that would be great. Mm -hmm. I, I just wanted to say when I get tired, my English gets a bit um, sh shaky <laughs> and Swissy as well. So <laughs> Shaky and Swissy. <laughs> so the My Secret Life Summit that Leah was um, just now referring to is a project that is near and dear to us. So we started the first summit in the beginning of the year around I think May the beginning of May we went live with the summit the first time around and what it is is it's we had gone out and we've spoken with 21 people a lot of um, coaches and mentors in the 3P community the three principles community but also people just like you and me who they were hiding something from the outside world, so something that they felt like was a personal challenge, a, a difficult situation or circumstance, but mostly something they thought was wrong with them. And they would look out into the world and see everyone living life apparently nicely, successfully fulfilled, but inside of themselves, they didn't feel that they were getting life right. And they were in some sort of inner conflict or turmoil or insecurity or shame, like just so many different things. And in these interviews, we talk with them about their secret that they were keeping, but we also, and it's even more important, talk about life's secret that they found out that changed everything for the better, that brought them out of the darkness and into the light and led them to a space where they are living a free life, right? And with free and, and peaceful, we, what we really mean is just in the beautiful feeling of life, uh, living in joy and in, in, in inner, inner peace and calmness and a lot less caught up in the inside turmoil that our little voice in our head is always trying to get us into. And they're inspirational stories, they're moving stories, they're stories that brought us to tears, they're stories that made us laugh. Mm -hmm. And it's now an evergreen. So what does that mean? Mm -hmm. You want to say what the evergreen means? <laughs> <I'll> try. <laughs> an evergreen. It means that it's possible to start on any given moment. Yeah. I mean, you you just can uh, start today and tomorrow the interviews will just land into your inbox in the mail and you will have this week with us kind of for yourself, but nevertheless, we are all together in this. Yeah. So it's kind of a never ending summit. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. And why? Why did we do that? We really had the feeling that the world needs a, a, a bit lightness probably, or that there we are in quite um, difficult times for um, a lot of people at the moment. And a lot of people are alone or at home or in different situations. And we just know that this understanding could change your perspective on life and could change how you feel about things. And yeah. that's why we really wanted to kind of contribute to, yeah, the... the mental health <laughs> uh, of the world in a way i mean that's that sounds a bit big but <laughs> but it's true <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no. yes and that's why we really would like you guys to spread the world in a in a in a way to share the link with beloved ones or friends or people that you think could benefit from it yeah so and all the three guest speakers today are um, 
part of the summit. Mm -hmm. So their transformative stories, their insights, um, are you you would be able to watch them if you, yeah. um, yeah. You Was heißt up. anmelden? Ah, oh, sign up. If you sign up. And yes. so we, the link to that, which I'm sure Vilja has already posted while we were talking, is um, mysecretlife-online.com. Um, it took us a while to find the URL because My Secret Life has some edgy uh, meanings. Mm. <laughs> yes. don't, don't get confused if you get lost somewhere where you didn't think you needed to nope. be. <laughs> Get on the page where you see us, <laughs> yes. mysecretlife-online.com, and you can sign up for free. And you you can binge watch. For like you know how you binge watch Netflix. This will be the best binge watch that you you've ever done. So it's totally worth, um, yeah, getting on there and watching all of the interviews. And actually, I, I have really on my ears. So if you think, what is Leah doing, or why is she speaking? It's like the um, uh, Regie, the... She's got the director in her ear. It's yes, like an, off, the, an yeah. off stage direction. Yes. Yeah. And there is something to win today. So if you're watching right now live, then you've got the opportunity to win the package mm -hmm. of My Secret Life. And the package is really, really for binge watching. I mean, mm -hmm. then you've got all the interviews at any time, all the time and forever. So, um, and how do you do that? <laughs> it's very easy. You just have to write a comment yeah. or to ask a question. Maybe we, we will be able to answer your questions as well. Or to, is it enough to just let, um, a thumb up? No, a little comment. A comment. We, we, we want a little comment. Yeah. You can make them do some work. <laughs> so that's quite easy. And at the end, Vilia has kind of this generator that just picks one of the, the common makers, comment makers. Like a yeah. fancy random generator, mm -hmm. winner picker. Yeah. Let's just call it that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So Orit is. Um, here and I will let her, her in yeah. for, and then we start like or we continue our conversation yeah. with our lovely guest Orit Eschel. Orit! Are you able to hear us? We I can't hear you. <laughs> I, I was know. just watching you on Facebook just <laughs> to understand what's going on, so I had to turn you off over there. Oh, cool! Hi. Hey. Sorry, I will. I'm. I'm. I have a little cold, so I'm coughing every once in a while. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> totally okay. There's no chance of catching anything from across the Zoom room, so we're all good. <laughs> Absolutely. So good to see you. Hi. How are you? Hey. Just a second. Can I uh, just hide my self view so I don't have to see myself? Okay. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Then I can just concentrate on you. It's much nicer. Yeah, that's great. Quite good, actually. I was a bit nervous and I looked like really streng, or ernst, ernst, nein. Uh, serious. Serious. And Shelly was like, how is your energy? And I was like, I have to concentrate. Wait. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> yeah. But good. Mm -hmm. I guess I feel about the same. Mm. I don't know if I'm serious, but I was like a little nervous. I don't know why. Mm. Yeah. So we're just hanging out. Look, I've got very beautiful, beautiful cookies. <laughs> I've got really nice ones from my father. The Zimsterne, mm. they are called in Switzerland. Yeah. Cinnamon and, stars. Yes. Mm -hmm. And... Um, these ones are typical Swiss cookies, and everyone loves them. They're called Mailanderli, like um, Milan, Milan, Milan. 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 Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We just would call them butter cookies, I think, in the U.S. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I just, I just bought some candy canes. So I was telling Leah at the beginning of our conversation, the cookies that we had last week for the cookies and coffee conversation are long gone. <laughs> Because no cookies can survive in this house. And 
to our disgrace. We don't even have children who are like eating them. It's just Heiko and myself. So the cookies are gone and I got some candy canes. <laughs> yeah, that. I have a piece of chocolate I sold from my kids because my yeah. kids. <laughs> That's great. So we've, we are good with the sweets. Maybe we could just start. I texted Ori today and asked how she was. And she said, you know, it was a bit rocky, but I'm okay. And I really love that. I love this seeing this freedom to to be okay with not being okay. It's it's freedom in a way. So I would love to just look in this direction because actually I think a lot of people feel like that at the moment without the freedom part. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I just I, I wrote to Leah that I was feeling a little down the last few days, mm -hmm. uh, which is, was kind of interesting also when I thought about the talk we're going to have. Mm -hmm. And it's always interesting to see like the comparison to how it used to be, uh, because that's exactly the freedom part. Mm -hmm. um, that it's like, yeah, it's like at first it's like the freedom to just feel whatever I feel. Mm -hmm. without having to kind of banish it <laughs> yeah. or fight it so much um like i feel a lot of freedom i just i'll just say like for the people who don't know me i just i i kind of um i don't like to say like everyone i stumbled across this understanding i just came across this understanding mm -hmm. like about the summer three years ago um so it's so and it's really changed my life like in the point of view of just because I've known this feeling like forever you know just feeling down every once in a while going inside my head you know it's going like the thoughts going faster or just having like all this load of all these things and I just realized today it's like we have to-do lists they're actually like mm -hmm. to think lists mm -hmm. <laughs> we have all these things like on our list to think about like that we just put them there and we just and we just think about them because we think we have to think about them <laughs> so so um so i just noticed there was a lot of my on my list this week <laughs> i guess and so so a lot of what i've noticed is it's like this freedom from it's like seeing that i have this list and that i'm thinking about it but there's a lot of freedom of like realizing that i don't have to think them through mm. i don't have to keep on going with them i don't have to take them seriously um I don't have to do anything about them and it's such a big difference because it used to be like oh there's this going on there's this going on and I don't feel well so I need to come with a master plan which I'll never really you know I'll try to strictly mm -hmm. follow and then it will fail so it's like there's so much that was cut off the list so mm -hmm. so it's like even in periods or days like this when the load can feel kind of heavy it's so much lighter than before because there's all these extra things that just came off it you know it's just like um the fighting part goes you know off the the load mm -hmm. and uh, coming up with the master plan kind of like off the list right all these things mm -hmm. that are just not on the list anymore or if they come i just they just go away mm -hmm. and most of all for me it's like i think this is the thing that's been my major insight was that things are always shifting like it never stays the way it is mm -hmm. which is kind of kind of like of course it's common sense but i it's like it, it wasn't very clear to me um so every time that i felt something it felt like oh it's going to stay like this forever so of course i had to fight it and now it's kind of like oh, i know it's going to pass mm -hmm. i don't know when but it's going to pass so there's so much freedom in that it's a kind of um it's just a different world yeah. <laughs> and it's funny because i could also see it uh, earlier today it's also a part of the freedom is just uh, kind of seeing the um, through the um, illusion in a way in this thing of like what's happening when we feel kind of down mm -hmm. or when we are so preoccupied with things and it's like for me it was always also um it's like always, but I can see more through it and also in the sense of like, oh, a part of the game that's going on when we feel this way, it's almost like um, 
we play with ourselves, like seeing how much suffering we can take. <laughs> like, uh, because we know actually kind of some of the things that will make us feel better, like moving or dancing or singing, whatever, right? Like things that are in movement, but there's so much resistance to it when we feel bad. <laughs> Uh, but it's like, I know, and I also knew it in the past that it would help, but kind of resisting it. And now I can see that I'm playing this game. Mm -hmm. It's like, you can see yourself like on, on, on a stage in the theater, almost. Yeah. You kind of almost know that you are playing a part, mm -hmm. that, you've, you're, you're, that you rehearse your entire life. So even if you don't feel very well while doing it, it's like, it's, at least it's transparent. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like there are these moments that you can even just kind of see the, just the ridicule, like the ridicule, the, how much, how ri the ridiculous it is. Ridiculousness. The oh, ridiculousness. Oh. Thank you, <laughs> Shalia. The English word. <laughs> the ridiculousness of it. And mm -hmm. then you can kind of like your point of view shifts and then you can go on and mm -hmm. kind of test yourself again. Oh, no, I'll just feel this way. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, so I really like it that, uh, you know, there's, it's just, it's funnier in a sense also when we feel bad. Mm -hmm. It's not that serious anymore, no, isn't it? I mean, before it, it felt like life-threatening sometimes. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, I literally thought that I'm going to die mm -hmm. if I stay longer in this feeling I didn't want to have or... And yeah, when you say this, what comes up to me is like a picture of like a dead end street mm -hmm. or something. And it's really used to look like a dead end. Yes. Um, so, and now it's like, uh, it's a dead end, but there's, you know, that there's a lane on the side that you can do a shortcut. And you sh kind of know that you will see it. You don't know when, you don't know how, but you will. And, and you don't have to bang your head against the wall. I mean, mm -hmm. you can, and if you do it, you just watch it as you, as you just said, but it's not like yeah, because that It's really. fun like, to see also like, um, like I, I can, you know, all these thoughts, like how also illogical that is, like all the thoughts that are really serious and some of them are really serious, but at the mm -hmm. same time, you can see how you can have one at the moment and a really contrasting one in the next moment. And one moment you can think, oh, it's like that because I'm a parent. And the next moment, oh, I feel, thanks God, I'm a parent because, you know, I have to go and pick my kid up, uh, like to pick my kid from school. And then I'm already outside and I feel better. So I'm like, oh, <laughs> thanks God. <laughs> so you can throw it at anything, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, thanks God. Like, I don't have to go along with all these explanations anymore. Mm. It's, it's so freeing mm. like it can it, it can happen i don't have to follow them wow mm. <laughs> it's so, much better. so for the people who are maybe totally new to us and to this understanding in general just maybe just a little bit of help for them in this moment we're a little bit talking about the principle of thought i guess so just the idea that as human beings, we think. And from all the 7.6 billion other people on the planet, I don't think that we could find a single person who would disagree with us that people think. And thought happens to us. And we get a lot of thought energy coming our way all day long in waking hours and sleeping hours our personal computer mind is just thinking all the time and maybe you too whoever's listening out there you can recognize you have, have thinking you're not the thinking but you have thinking that's mm -hmm. happening to you as well all day every day and sometimes we we have this idea, it's like a little dialogue in our head, you know, that little voice that's talking to you, that's telling you things. Mm -hmm. And what Orit is pointing to, what she was pointing to 
as far as it's changing. It's just, we get all kinds of thinking and all types of qualities, you know, just some neutral thinking that doesn't bring up a lot of feeling in us. And sometimes some really serious thinking that arouses some serious feelings in us and some maybe prideful feelings that, or thoughts that bring up some prideful feelings in us and whatever thoughts that are in our field of consciousness at the moment creates an experience that we can feel. In yeah, it's also the illusion part. I like to think about it as like uh, we have the most um, like a special effects department, yeah. like the biggest budget in yeah. the world. <laughs> yeah. and it makes everything look just so real and compelling. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing, right? And, and what we're pointing to here in the, this conversation is also as real as that thought might look and feel in the moment, we have a chance to just let it be what it is, which mm -hmm. is like an experience that's entered into our field of consciousness. And there's nothing to be done about that experience. There's no need to try to get rid of it or to try to keep it or anything else because we're getting a constant stream of new experiences all the time. And they're nothing to be scared of or worried about. They're not saying anything about us, um, how well we're doing in the world, how well we're not doing in the world. And that's, that's the freedom. It's just the fact that we think. Yeah. And what I really love is that we are so well equ equipped. Mm. We feel it. And if we feel crappy, anxious, stressed, we have stressful, crappy, anxious thinking going on conscious or unconscious it doesn't matter at the end yeah. and when I realized that this I just could feel it and being aware and sometimes jump in it and do whatever I do with my thinking but it started to appear as this alarm clock in a way even though we forget it and we we don't know that it works or we lose the trust that it always works the same way, we kind of start to know, oh, I'm there again. As you pointed for it, I was lost and up in my head and I felt whatever I felt. Me too, Shelia too, mm. all of us. But this sensation changed I really start to oh, oh I feel hmm, okay I don't trust what's going on in my head even though it feels really real and appealing this oh you're my master I have to trust you that kind of softened yeah with time in a way as well yeah yeah that's a really big difference mm -hmm. so it's just knowing that it feels that yeah that it feels real but you just know that it's not <laughs> yes it makes a very big difference because it used to just um yeah to also yeah just know that it's real but it's not yeah you know that and it's not, it's not. at the beginning do you guys remember that it really felt counterintuitive mm. it's the it's the complete opposite that to what we were used to do Absolutely. all of us i mean we were used to jump in and analyze it to death yeah and uh it's this really counterintuitive thing to, for me, it felt like I really wanted to. Oh, yeah. And it's exactly the opposite to do. 
Yeah, totally, totally. Mm-hmm. I remember, you know, before I came across this understanding, um, building my business. And at the time I was living part-time in Switzerland and part-time in Germany. <laughs> And I remember so many days so vividly where I would be getting up in the morning and starting to work on whatever I was working on, right? The next webinar, the next email, getting just, you know, the stuff I do for my business. I'm trying to, trying to get the word out there that I'm building something that was just brand new onto, onto the market. And during that morning time, I would be just busy. So I, I, I wasn't, indulging in my thinking a lot because I just didn't have time for it and then I would decide to take a little break and have some lunch and I'd often go for a walk down on the river we have we're living right across from the river and I remember then my my thoughts would just pop up and I wouldn't be busy so I'd just be like okay they're there they're important I need to go into them and what they were telling me was, Shalia, you're never going to make it with you this idea you have to, to be a, an online coach. It's just not going to happen for you. And what it would tell me was everybody else can do it, but you can't do it. They're, they're stronger than you. You're, you're too sensitive. You're too weak. And whatever, whatever the thing was, you're not fast enough. You're not driven enough. Like just a, just a ton of thinking. And then that feeling because I would go into it I thought it it was it it was my habit to to listen to that thinking and think it meant something and I would start to feel terrible and on a lot of those walks I would just start crying and I would just come into a place of just awful sadness and and insecurity and I just didn't know I was just innocently like Leah said like a th- the thought would come up, the experience would be in my field. And just instead of going like, oh, wait a minute, that's a warning signal to not go there. I would do the opposite. I would go right in there, right? Because I thought, I thought I needed to do that. And I think that's a lot of people's misunderstanding, innocently. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> Right, could you relate to that? <laughs> yeah, only that for me it used to be like that with academic work and um, and trying to be busy with it, but being really upset and almost crying while doing it in the morning before going to the walk around the canal and praying. <laughs> <laughs> so you were crying before the walk. So all these, you know, I had all these thoughts this week. You know, uh, my my kid was at like my three year old was at home this week because she was a little sick. She couldn't go to kindergarten, so I had all these also like like normal but then a little more oh and you're not doing enough things for work so how will it take off but it doesn't matter because it's corona time anyway so we're going to be shut down at home so it's you know all these things you know and so maybe you should just volunteer but i can't take the time so just be of service blah 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 you know and it's all these things it's just say you're go- in another way it's as if your brain tells you you're only going to be okay when Mm. Yeah. when you work enough when you're going to be in service mm-hmm. when you volunteer whatever of course mm-hmm. and luckily i already know that it's not true yeah. <laughs> even without that comment because i think we already know it doesn't matter if all these things let's say i would have kind of ticked them you know mm-hmm. i'd be in service i'd be you know having the business that i wanted everything you know volunteering everything I would still have my ups and downs. I still have my inner climate that does whatever it does. There would still be things that would upset me. And so it doesn't matter. So it brings us back to the, oh, we already have everything that we need. It's just that I can't really feel it at the moment, but I know that it's there. Mm -hmm. Um, And even in times when I feel bad, I I still have these really nice moments. Mm -hmm. While at the past, I would discard them. Uh, and it's just like focusing only on the bad ones. So, yeah, <laughs> it's really nice to know all these things. It's, I, I hear this lightness in the human experience. Not that it's just light, but it's a lot lighter to just know it goes up and down. And 
And you pointed to the, the next principle. And it's grace, it's mind, it's, it's always there. It's this force behind everything yeah. that we are made of. And I really couldn't feel that before. I mean, it was happening when I was alive, <laughs> almost 40, two kids, career, whatever, but it was covered under these li layers of thought and personal experience and stories about my experience. And to start to see, as you pointed out this, and it's there and you know it now. And you, even when you don't feel it, you know it. And you start to kind of watch yourself being alive and doing all these amazing things and sometimes having a beautiful experience and sometimes having a crappy experience. So what? <laughs> yeah, what I find so amazing now is the, I don't know in a way if it's the ability to notice that or um, not being so committed, like being much less committed to mm -hmm. how we feel. So <laughs> it's like the juxtaposition of these two different, like feeling really crappy and feeling really, you know, wonderful. The next moment, it's really like a storm and then the rainbow, mm -hmm. whatever. And it's really like I had just like a couple of days ago or, you know, also today in any day, you know, like one moment doesn't sound so politically, politically correct, but it's like, I can think like my kids, you know, my son is like, what's, what's that? Like, I really don't like him. And then, you know, the next moment it's like, oh, you know, bursting with love or yeah. like feeling that everything is really crap in one moment. And the next one you're like, oh, I have everything I need. <laughs> <laughs> so and I guess there were moments like this in the past. I don't know. It's like, I don't, I don't remember anymore in some ways. Maybe it was like that, but I just, I, what I can remember, and it's good sometimes to have reminders like this week, you know, that it's of how it used to be sometimes a little bit, like how compelled we are with this, you know, feeling more down, but it's like, oh, I used to be so committed to feeling crappy. Mm -hmm. Like, it's like this, so it's also like, uh, if I feel, it's like, this is, it's sometimes, it's like, when you're in it, it's like, oh, this is the real me. Mm. I forget my, my my true nature right so it's like this is the real me so it's almost like I, I also had these thoughts today like oh do I have to keep it because so when I come on this uh Facebook live today it would be the real me right because this is how I felt this morning <laughs> I will do I do, should I hold on to it so I can come with this it's really stupid right mm. but this is how I used to live and it's really stupid because in this in the same way you kind of have to hold on to everything else. So it, but it doesn't make sense. Our personal minds don't make any sense. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. We think we do, but it's just <laughs> the really nice thing to notice. Oh, when everything clears up, like common sense is just, you know, it's, it's there. Mm -hmm. But our common sense, the, the logical, the logic of our brains is like, of our personal minds is so illogical <laughs> unbelievable <That's laughs> like so it comes true. up with all these really stupid things yeah. yeah and you just start seeing it around all the time when you notice that mm -hmm. like when people talk also it's like it doesn't make any sense but for you at the moment it really looks like it mm -hmm. makes sense yeah but just noticing it is really wonderful mm -hmm. true mm -hmm. so yeah. and you see it in others very easily and it's so difficult to see it in yourself it's like i'm not angry i'm not stupid when i'm angry of course we are we <laughs> this is one of the nice things like uh, the the uh, kids are our best you know it's like i can't get rid of the cliches but uh, you know they're they're true uh, it's like uh, kids are our best teachers, but it's like you really see that, you know, because babies and then kids, they have their tantrums and before they can speak, you can just see they get upset about something, right? It's not the way they wanted it. They get really upset. You have to make sure they don't harm themselves. And afterwards they can be, you know, just they can be happy so quickly. 
Mm -hmm. right? And then they start talking. And when we hear them, you know, they say, oh, I don't want it to be this way, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, they start crying. And we start without noticing, addressing like the content of what they're mm. saying, right? And then as we grow, it's like what the content seems like, this is the thing. But, you know, once you, you see that with babies and you just realize, yeah. oh, it's just the same. It's just the same. But it was actually nice when they didn't have the content yet, you know, because then you can see it's like almost some sort of energy that has to come through yeah. and go out. And then when you realize, oh, I can treat everything like this. Mm -hmm. I don't need it's like really it's like a bad idea mm -hmm. to address the content mm -hmm. maybe sometimes when you talk to people because you have to be polite you know <laughs> <laughs> or something you, you 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 have to maybe say something about it but you already know that it's not about that mm -hmm. it's really helpful and then also like with my son who's seven I can see also his logic like the conclusions he comes to for him it looks very logical but you know we already know also about some things that are supposedly like he sees in nature or whatever, it, it's not logical at all. But this is like, we are going through a process, you know, as we grow up of like making, deducting things and coming to conclusions. Yeah. And as we grow older, it seems like, oh, our conclusions are right. Mm -hmm. Because they seem to have something to do with the world. <laughs> mm -hmm. So we really stick to them. So it's really That's useful nice. to see. <laughs> Everyone think that they're right. So, this is kind of this separation. I mean, and everyone is right in a way because that's just the experience they have in the moment, the thinking they have moment to moment and they believe it. And that's why they react in a certain way. And you see it very clearly with kids as you just told us, but you can see it everywhere. And for me to realize that, I did fall in love with humanity again, not with the way we act. I mean, we do bloody stupid things or cruel or whatever, but to really start to see the innocence in it, that it feels so right and logic and a conclusion of and it's not at all mm. and yeah it's this whole paradigm shift of inside out and outside in but inside out that we experience it and underneath even as well from inside is this knowing mm. but the other the other knowing, the deeper knowing, the knowing we, we can't think ourselves into. And I don't know where I wanted to go, but it was kind <laughs> of this direction. <laughs> yeah. Mm. And it sounds so strange to fall in love with this a bit crazy human experience, but in this, we, we call it in the German programs, we have totally human and more than human. Like to start to see that we are more than our thinking. Yeah. We have the thinking. And we can have both on this and be okay. And be on this playground again of, of the play of being human. And to You're know working. that we are not able to fail even though we are failing all the time. Sorry, got it. Okay. Um, what's something that came up to my mind when you were talking now? I don't know if for me it's still falling in love with humanity. So it depends when. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's the ability maybe, I don't know if it's empathy, the word, or to identify, but it's like, it's like once we zoom out from the surface of like the, um, the, the specific behaviors, 
it makes it so much easier to just identify with other people. I just remember one sitting in the U-Bahn in the underground and I saw someone sitting there. He wasn't really, I think, uh, homeless, but he didn't look in the best shape. And he took out of his bag like this small uh, alcohol bottle and was drinking. And I, was, I wasn't feeling that great that day. And I was just listening to podcasts, you know? And I thought like, we're just the same. I'm trying to make myself feel better, you know, with listening to my podcast, you know, I want to feel better. Um, and he was just, you know, drinking. So, and I was like, we're just the same. You know, mm. I can like feel superior because, oh, I'm not drinking, whatever, but I'm not any different. Mm -hmm. I'm just, you know, we just all wanna, wanna feel good. Mm. We wanna thrive, we want to feel well. And uh, we just found our ways, our strategies to do something about it when we don't feel that great. Mm -hmm. For some of us, um, maybe the behaviors we got used to going to the strategies are more harmful for some of us they're better but sometimes we envy those of other people that look you know successful or they look productive but when you look at it you know that they're actually suffering they're not really enjoying sometimes you know mm -hmm. even when they're doing healthy stuff um and in this way like just seeing that it doesn't matter what the form of it is uh, how it looks on the surface it just in this way so I don't know if it's falling in love but it's just kind of <laughs> really being able to relate to people mm -hmm. and then it's more about yeah it's again more about the we and us mm -hmm. instead of just or needing to feel superior to other people mm -hmm. in order to feel better yeah so, And in this, I find hope, like that was the other mm -hmm. word. We, we didn't speak about that word yet <laughs> because I wanted to, I, I had some thoughts about it, if it's okay to say it, because I was like, what am I going to say about hope? Like on some, like on a week, like this week, I don't feel much hope in, in a lot of ways. And I had a couple of thoughts about it. First, um, for me this past year, it was a lot about grief. Um, I have to say, I never really lost anyone who's really dear to me, like grandparents, but they died in old age. So it was like, okay, but I have a lot of grief about the world and, you know, environment, and species dying and all these things. So in a lot of ways, I don't feel hope about that. Um, I also see that it helped me not to have hope about it because it was like also having then less fear in a way. Like not, not disappointment or despair in a way. It's like more being with what is. Mm. Uh, but it's more about the hope of like as more like people realize and see what we see and how it changed us. It's again going back to what I said before, I guess. It's like, oh, we're always going to have our ups and downs. We're always going to be human. And for me, this is a kind of hope of as more of us see it, it's like, um, yeah, it doesn't matter in a way if it's that situation or that situation, we're also, we are always going to be human. Mm. And hopefully we are going to function better with ourselves and each other mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. um, as we see it more deeply. Mm. Mm. What's just coming to me, or because um, I think a lot of people right now are struggling with the state of the world and it looks like we're in the fight of our lives you know with, with everything that's going on whether it's covid or the environment the political atmosphere all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. and i have to just think of george pransky and um he was talking about how come this understanding is good for the environment have you heard him speak about that or it no, but I can imagine where it's going to. <laughs> I know, I know, I'm much nicer to my environment yeah. when I, with my understanding. Yeah, well, <laughs> whether I, it's my immediate one or the. <laughs> or the or, awesome. Yeah, I can't. I probably won't bring it together what he said exactly, but just the essence that I that I remember from the conversation was, you know, there's just something about when we realized this thing you were talking about, like that illusion of the 
when I get there, then I'll be okay. Mm. You know, like when I have that car, I'll be okay. When I have that job, I'll be okay. When I have that weight on the scales, I'll be okay. Well, like whatever it is, right? When we, when we see through the illusion of that and when, we, when, our, when our busy mind calms down over time and when we feel more and more in touch with this space of well-being that we are, the, the easier it is that little things bring us joy. Like it takes so little that we feel joy whether it's just looking at the tree leaves color changing or the smell of the air. And the less we need to feel joyful or connected or, or alive in this life, the less we consume. Hmm. Or as, yeah, less we try to subjugate someone else you know colonialize or uh, mm -hmm. demean or whatever right the yeah. less we the less we judge other people for their their political beliefs and the more loving we feel and the more we help each other in situations that are that are real that are out there yes right? the more we take precautions for each other right mm -hmm. so to me that's the hope is this understanding is just like the beginning of a domino effect mm -hmm. yeah and as you said before or it and you as well Shelia it's beautiful all of us didn't believe that we were able to change. I thought that I was broken for real. And this hole, and it, not the wholeness, but the sloch hole, oh. in my, I thought I had in my soul or wherever I thought it was, I had to fill it with things or destructive behavior or and that we could see it all of us and different we it was our path yours and mine and we saw it in different ways and times but it changed us deeply and that was so hopeful to me if it's possible for me, it's possible for you. It's possible for everyone. Mm. And it doesn't mean, I mean, it's not that everyone has to see it or change, but that there is a possibility. That's already hopeful to me. I, a man today in the street, probably he was drunk too, in front of a restaurant, he was um, telling uh, mean words against a, a man who had a, of color. And I just turned around and it was so, before, I always was really into justice as well, but then I would have cried or said something or, and I was just, I just turned and I was staying there and he looked at me and he was like, rrr, 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 and he wanted to go further and, and we looked at each other and he kind of stopped. And it was nothing, but it was not more, you know, it was less he kind of stopped and i turned around again and walked away i didn't feel i was just present with the situation 
I didn't know if I would do or say something, but I, I could see beneath his behavior mm. and he could somehow feel it, you know, and he stopped and, yeah, and he turned and it was it quiet and just, it was not me. It was me seeing him and being present and being also very curious what will show up. It was not this preformed way of how will I behave. It was really just opening up to what is. And in a way it it softened the situation of two men in the street that could have turned into a fight. Mm -hmm. And being able to see and feel that in myself and in others. It changed my life and the life of the ones around me as well. So it has this ripple effect. without me having to know how it will turn out. And that's so hopeful. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I think that was the word I used the most during the summit, no? Yeah, it is. Okay. It was like, everyone thought that I was smoking or something or it, they told me afterward, like, yeah. You look stoned, girl. Yeah. <laughs> oh. And at the end, it's so hopeful. <laughs> and I, I, I think it's still the same. Yeah. That's so good. Yeah. So I see that Robin is already knocking on the oh. virtual room. Are you just sitting there, like, do you take any breaks or you just sit, sit through three hours? I would have never been able to do that. I think even when I have like a 90 minutes, something, I have to run to the toilet <laughs> every once in a while. It, I, time, I, the time flies already. We didn't realize that we didn't go to the toilet the last time. It was just like three hours. <laughs> the extended live stream. Wow. Thank you so yeah, much. So much, Orit. And if you I want didn't to... have time to eat my chocolate. Yeah, it went by. Yeah. Yeah. Shelia will tell something to people about you that they can connect with you. Yeah, so, so yes, Orit, Orit is one of the speakers on our My Secret Live Summit and that we talked about at the beginning of the live stream and that I wanted to mention again, because some people have come on board maybe in the middle and they didn't hear it. Um, it's a free opportunity to go listen to Orid and 20 other people speak about their secret lives. And Orid's story was particularly moving and beautiful. And you can sign up there on mysecretlife-online Dot com and the day you sign up it starts the next day because it's an evergreen concept it's always going on from starting today we just set it up this week so it's brand new um, go and watch the interviews um, they're very touching and they give you the opportunity to see something new for yourself and maybe have a more lighter hopeful peaceful experience of of life and being human. And that's why we're doing everything we do is so that you have that chance. Yes. So check it and out. And Lilia, it's interview. Can you put Orit's Facebook as well in the comments? And are we still on live? Because it says leider kann dieses Video nicht abgespielt werden. Good. My end is looking live still. Good. Okay. Thank you, my dear. Thank you for Jules. everything that you're doing. It's really Thanks, Orange. Have a wonderful evening. You too. Bye. Bye. Ciao, Libby. <laughs> so, next. <laughs> yeah. Do we want to say anything before we let Robin in? Or are we just going to let him in the door? We, I don't know. We let him power. in the door. 
power. We've got the power. <laughs> Absolutely. I think, I think we'll just let Robin in. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah. We'll let him in. Today it's more the Friday evening mood, no? I'm yeah. like, Robin! Hello. Robin, we were just having a power conversation, like that we have the power to let you in. Where are you? I'm fine. Are you, can you hear me? I can hear you. Yes. Okay. You're in it, a little jiggy. Yeah. Yeah. Look a little. I'm sorry. <laughs> But you can, uh, okay, Are you hang at home, on. Robin, or are you somewhere else? I'm somewhere else. Oh, I was going to say, I don't recognize the background at all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hang on. But hang on. I'm, uh, okay. Yeah. Can you hear me? I think, yes. Because my headphone sometimes doesn't work very well. We hear you. Is there, yeah? Uh, no, now it oh. is. No. <laughs> No, hang on. Sorry. Let me see. Okay. Is is it okay now? Yes. Okay. So I won't I won't touch anything else. Don't move. Don't breathe. Don't say yeah. anything. No, you can't. Don't say breathe. Don't move. <laughs> I, I will tell the, the next people, probably they are new ones, that they could win something and then you could speak about Robin Shelia. Is that okay? Yeah. So live streamers, I don't know if there are any actually, I can't see it. <laughs> so maybe nobody is watching and we're having fun. So um, yes, they were because we had already comments and that's the thing. You could win something if you're with us tonight and you could win the My Secret Life Summit package and it oh, means wow. yeah, that you are able to binge watch the whole summit and to just stay at home as you have to probably. And yeah, um, we say take a, a bath with us. I mean, not literally, but somehow <laughs> metaphorically. <laughs> so that's quite nice too. <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting already tired. <laughs> so... Um, yeah, just comment and or ask a question. Vilja tells me in my ear if there is a question, actually. Gal Vilja? Oh, wow. Yeah. And you have to watch out <laughs> for the questions. And at the end, she will just pick someone randomly. She has got this um, funny generator that could pick a comment and then this person will win the package. So that's oh. just for the, the people who are live with, with us today. And now oh. we welcome Robin. Robin, so I'll introduce Hello. you. Hello. <laughs> so Robin is coming to us all the way from Sao Paulo in Brazil, but he, where are you today? Are you in Sao Paulo or are you uh, Sao Paulo? I'm in Sao Paulo, yeah, yeah I'm okay. in Sao Paulo. I'm just not at home. Okay, I have an idea where you are. I, I, I'm not going to say that. Yeah, I, I have a nice background. <laughs> yeah, really lovely background. Robin is a coach and a three principles mentor. And Robin has um, a business that revolves around um, working with leaders, particularly in organizations. And I like to say Robin helps leaders to have a lighter life. Um, mm. That was the, my understanding, what he, what he did the first time we talked about it. And I keep pushing him to like, that's what you need to say you do, but he says all kinds of other stuff too. <laughs> Robin is my, my mastermind partner. We see each other usually once a week if we're not um, off schedule. And um, so that's why I know intimately his backdrop and that's that he's not at home today. And um, Robin is also um, a speaker on our My Secret Life Summit. So again, some, someone you can listen to in more detail and hear his secret life story. Don't give anything away from that, Robin. So they'll go and watch. I won't. That's a secret. <laughs> it's a secret. And <coughs> we're so happy to have you here today, Robin. How are you doing? Yeah, great. I'm really glad to be here. Thank you for, for asking me to join. I always love the conversations we have. 
So we're talking today about freedom and hope. And we just had a little bit of a start with Orit. Mm -hmm. and oh, and we didn't, for the people who were with us before, Orit is a speaker and a coach as well. Yeah. And it's in the comments if you want to contact her. So you will find everything on the comments beneath the video. So just to let you know, a transformative coach in based in Germany and speaking English and she's from Israel originally. Yeah, yeah freedom and hope. <laughs> well, so I'll kick us off, Robin, and then we'll see mm -hmm. where you go from here. So mm -hmm. when I read the word freedom, because Leah set up all of the Friday coffee cookies and conversations and by the way we have some not some cookies but some candy canes and we have mm. did you bring anything robin to the meeting today? yeah water i just had lunch so very excited yeah. but when she said the, the word freedom it made me think back to last summer in 2019 so two summers ago and I was just kind of transitioning in my business from just doing primarily business coaching for experts and solopreneurs to moving more in the direction of this understanding of the three principles, which we are talking about today, whether we've mentioned it or not, but it's also um, the basis of the summit. And we talk about the understandings, the three principles. And I remember I was working with a brand expert and she was trying to help me sort of think through some ways I could reposition my business and, and those kind of things. And I remember she had me write out sort of a, a statement. It was some sort of homework. I was just like free writing down, like what, what is the value of this understanding for, for potential clients, for people who hear about it. And I remember quite specifically, one of the biggest things that kept coming up again and again, and I was, as I was free writing was, liberation mm. liberation liberation because for me the core benefit of understanding this understanding is the liberation that happens in your life and in your mental space and in your feeling um, so I'm just going to kick us off with that. And Robin, like, what have you seen about this liberation? Yeah, uh, sometimes I I, I, I I call it like psychological freedom. Mm. And it's, it's this initial, I mean, initially, it's just this big release that we get even a bit lost because it's like it's so much space and freedom that we're not used to because like all this thinking dropped and all, all these things dropped away and you're like just in the space yeah this free space with like and and we're so used to just fill it up with stuff all the time i mean until that point where we're not used to just the space and being with the space and the freedom and this so, so for me, it's like you get unshackled from your thoughts kind mm. of thing. Yeah. So you, you just get into to this, to this freedom. And it's, it's kind of like, I mean, uh, I, I broke my arm when I was like 11 years old or something. And it really hurts. And I had to use a cast and everything. And it kind of, it, it broke and it went a bit. I mean, the guy had to put it back into place and everything. So it was kind of a pain and every once in a while until today um i i sometimes feel a bit of pain on that arm and i'm reminded of the mm -hmm. like obviously in a much smaller scale of the of the pain that i i had when i when i broke the arm and for me this liberation is 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 kind of you go around life without the pain you know, I mean, it's, it's as if you had that pain all the time and then you're suddenly free of it, which is actually our normal state. Yeah? 
-hmm. Our normal state is to be free of the pain, is to be free of stress, is to be free of pressure, is to be at peace, is to be just in our well-being. That's our natural state. But we're so used to this constant pain that we think the pain is the normal and that the, the no pain is, is, is like what we, sh we should thrive to achieve mm -hmm. instead of relaxing into. Huh? So every once in a while, I'll, I'll have this pain and it reminds me, oh, I used to have this terrible pain when I broke my arm and it was off. But I don't go around when I'm not feeling the pain. I don't go around saying, oh, it's so good that I don't have that pain. <laughs> oh my life is so good because i'm free of the pain and it's the thing thing it's the same thing nowadays with the pressure and the stress and the and and this this freedom and liberation i don't go around every day it's like oh i'm so happy that i'm liberated and i'm free it's just that's the natural state i mean when i'm reminded of a bit of pressure or stress or whatever then i'll go and say like Oh, thank God I don't have that anymore all the time, you know? But it but but it's so that's why it's it's something that it, it's it's really interesting because and I was talking to this with with with, with the guy yesterday uh, specifically and 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 I said it's like it it's not a big deal but it but it's the biggest deal ever, mm -hmm. you know? It, 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 it's not a big deal because it isn't like um, because of that. It's, you're not like parading all the time, like oh, I'm free, I'm free, and like doing all that. You're just actually, actually free. Actually, I do. <laughs> yeah, like I was gonna say, Leah does every single day. Like she tells me all the time, I'm so happy that I came to this understanding. I can't tell you how free I feel. She really? parade yeah. every day, walking. Because probably it's, I'm in on this little, I know, I, I totally know what you're talking about, the notch of, oh, it used to be like that. And yeah. all, every time I've, I got the notch, I'm like, yes, <laughs> I don't have to. And yeah. yeah. But I so so I, think, I think there's just this, like, it's, oh, I'm, I mean, and, and that's the thing. It's like, it's just it's so freeing that you don't, you're even free from thinking of that, you know, you're even free of thinking that you're free <laughs> in a kind of way. And it's so, so, so yeah, I think, I think that that would be more or less my, my description of, of freedom. Mm -hmm. So I think if I were out there in the world listening to this video or live stream right now, I'd be like, okay, so, <laughs> so where does that liberation come from? Like, like, how do you, <laughs> you know, like that yeah, question. Yeah, the big question is like, that question how? All the time. Yeah. Like, what is it? Like, how do you get it? <laughs> yeah. You're actually free from asking the question. <laughs> <laughs> That's the true, the, the true liberation is when you're free from even asking the how. <laughs> mm. So, I mean, and, and this is where it gets um, really confusing for people because, and, and I'll even talk a bit about how I, I see my business nowadays in, in these terms, because before I would go up against like, you know, methods and strategies and you know how to's and and like techniques and whatever you know it's like ah oh, the technique for creativity the method for performance the the <laughs> strategy for freedom and yeah. and whatever and and okay i mean but but that's all happening in a software level okay that's all what's being processed so when I say a software level, it's like you have your computer and you have like softwares running on your computer and you can like just um, buy newer and better software, which, which is better and does more stuff and everything. But to run the, pro the, the software, you have to have a processor. Yeah? You have to have like the actual CPU, the, the, the processing unit. And that's where our mind comes in. 
because our mind is what's processing all these strategies, these methods, these techniques. There, our mind is what is actually um, the power behind all, all these softwares, like all these things that go on in our mind. So ideally, if you have a computer, you have to upgrade it and buy a, like a newer version that can run the, the newer software, yeah? Because if you have an old computer, it won't run the newer software. But we can't upgrade our mind because our mind is already infinite potential. So it's more like, how do we access this infinite potential? How do we access this? And how do we increase the processing power yeah, of this infinite potential? Yeah? And the way I see it is we increase the processing power by actually decreasing the other, by, by decreasing useless processing mm -hmm. that's going on. Mm. So it's, it's, we start seeing the, the uselessness of so many things that are going on in our mind. Yeah. But we have to see the uselessness for ourselves. There, there's no technique that's going to show us the uselessness. Because if I think it's useful, I'm going to continue doing it, like subconsciously, mm -hmm. without, without like consciously thinking about it. Yeah. So it, it, it's an exploration of ourselves, or of our inner selves with ourselves, and only we can do it. Um, it it's like, like watching someone ride a bike. I mean, you, you won't learn a, how to ride a bike by watching like someone ride a bike. Yeah. Yeah? You won't learn, you won't get fit by watching someone run and, and, and doing fitness exercise. <laughs> Yeah. You won't get healthy by seeing someone cool. eating a salad. Yeah. Yeah, that would be great. I would, I would <laughs> love, that would make my, my, my life so easy because all I would have to do is like watch people eat salads yeah. and I'm like, okay, Perfect. I'm really healthy right now. <laughs> but you know what would happen? We would then think like we have to now watch people eat salads and then we would yeah. think we're not watching people eating salads. No. So, <laughs> yeah, and, 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 and that's precisely why it doesn't work. Yeah, and that's precisely why mm -hmm. it, it doesn't. So it's something people have to, ha they have to realize for themselves, this, this freedom. And, and how does this realization in, in my own interpretation occur is we, we stop and we explore how true are the stories that are going on in our mind? Like, mm -hmm. Where are they actually coming from? What, what's actually going on inside? But from an internal perspective, not someone telling us, but us seeing that for ourselves and exploring it for ourselves and having insight and realizing and, mm. and, and being 100% total and completely honest with ourselves as well. Yeah. It's like we, we can't trick ourselves into freedom, you know? Mm. We can't trick ourselves into release. We can't convince ourselves that something is important because if we're trying to do the convincing, it's because for us, it's still true that that's important. Mm -hmm. We, we can't convince ourselves from an attaching to things because if we're trying to an attached, we're attached to, to the idea of an attachment. Mm. So the, and, and, and here's something beautiful that I, I, I heard re recently is kind of, we already know truth. Mm -hmm. It's already, it, it, I mean, we, we'll never access it, but we kind of have this, this general direction that we know truth because like, because when we hear it, we, we know it. And, and so there's something inside that already knows it. I mean, it has to know it to say that it's true or not, you know? Mm -hmm. There has to be something that, that knows it before we hear it, to judge it and say yes and no. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, so once we start seeing this and, and, and aligning ourselves with this and, 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 and seeing all these useless processes that are going on. And we start like just clearly seeing through them and, and the uselessness without, I mean, doing anything consciously, but just by understanding these things go dropping away and this whole processing power just goes increasing and we go, accessing this infinite potential more and more and and the freedom 
Yeah, the freedom from the have tos, the shoulds, the right way. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I don't even remember your, your question, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I'm just gonna pick up where you just left off because like what was coming to me, like I I'm on a Mac and um, I usually get a an interesting message when I've filled it up with too much crap. <laughs> and it's like, your computer is full. You only have nine GB left. You know, you need to do a cleaning process. And I'll open clean my Mac because that's the program that I use. And it's got this nifty little dashboard. You know, it'll go around like, this is the data garbage and this is the stuff there. And, and it just kind of goes around and it gets all those useless things that you've got saved and it just gets rid of them for you and it's this fantastic feeling <laughs> when it's gone like that that little monitor is really compelling because it's just just like yes my computer is getting cleaned up and then it takes it all away and and i was just thinking you know we we have a it comes with a feeling right we we kind of feel when our system is filled with garbage and I don't want to say that in a bad way but just like you know that the yeah. the data garbage the the stuff that mm -hmm. the, the the programs that we don't need the, all that thing like we feel it. it it comes in the feeling of constriction mm -hmm. maybe in the feeling of stress maybe in the feeling of urgency mm -hmm. maybe in the feeling mm -hmm. of confusion like we kind of we kind of know that there's something going on there in our system that's not useful to us. And yet, when there's a misunderstanding in place, like when we think the software is the thing, right? Mm -hmm. And we just go in there and we're like, yeah, I need more software. I need more strategies. I need more... Method. I need to upgrade my software. <laughs> right, right. And that and and when we realize like that's not it, you, you talked about the subtraction of that. Like I just talked about my clean my Mac that goes in and goes like, let's get rid of all the unnecessary thing, the things mm -hmm. that hinder the the natural performance of, of the machine, let's say, or the, in our case, mm -hmm. like you were you were pointing to that endless creative potential that, that enormously beautiful space and yeah it's so practical yeah i i had a very small incident it was not it could have been big but it was small this week my husband and myself he had a misunderstanding about the santa claus bag who is going to buy it so we didn't have one <laughs> and I could feel the anger rise, you know, but you said, but I said, but, and it was tension. And I literally could see myself getting tense. And in this moment, I realized it and let go. Mm -hmm. And it was Sunday and in the shop that had opened, they didn't have any. So my husband already went there. So they, there was no practical way we could think of to get one and I just relaxed and I knew I really want to have my little one to have a bag today mm -hmm. and it didn't take long we just sat and we ate and we spoke and I could feel the feeling of oh I have to think and where do we get it and da -da -da -da. just soften and mm -hmm. literally, in this moment, I realized I put two bags away last year. <laughs> and Mario, he has got nuts. And I opened the Advent calendar. What's the Advent calendar? I don't know the name of that. Layout. Advent calendar. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and I took Rob out all, all, <laughs> all the chocolate. So, and, and we, f we filled up two bags in no time. Mm 
and my husband played Santa Claus and rang the door and just run away and the little one opened and was happy and excited and it had chocolate in it and mm -hmm. just to see it over and over again and before I, I, I've knew, I've known this understanding. I, I know I would have get very upset and in overthinking and maybe calling people or, or having a fight with my husband and being in this. And in this let go, it could occur. The power could come through. Mm -hmm. The we are freeing up the space for obvious next step mm -hmm. it's amazing without yeah. effort uh, and it's it, it's really interesting because we're so used to um being in um in the problem solving mode like in society as a general it, it's always like there's a huge market for people who solve problems yes like mm -hmm. and the whole internet marketing the whole everything is is revolved about like the pain and the solving but there's very very little um that is geared towards prevention mm. very little that is geared towards like being prepared or or, or being free or not having the problem to start with mm. and this is exactly what we do but it's it's kind of like how do you account for the problems that you'll never have <laughs> or the problems that won't look like problems to you at all <laughs> exactly yeah. Yeah. How, how do you account for that <laughs> so it's so much easier to see a problem and like solve this problem and oh i'll, I'll charge you this for this problem solved then i'll charge you this for a problem that you'll never have mm. but we know where to look yeah, so I know, I know. I'm, I, it's, ultimate it's, problem solving. Yeah. No, that's but that's the thing. It's not do. even the problem solving. It's the it's the problem prevention. Yeah. Because you you'll never even have the problem. Yes. You'll never even be in the state where it's you, you'll never have the fight. Mm. You'll never have the like it's going around with your arm being okay. Mm-hmm. And sometimes your arm will hurt and you're like, oh, I remember how it used to feel with a broken yeah. arm. Yeah. Like kind of. And thank God I don't go around with this broken arm pain through my life. And that's what our people are going around with. It's like I have a broken arm and it's like, you know, it's, it's, and, and it's okay. I mean, like it's up to people for them to decide how they want to live, you know? Yeah. If you would like to, to live in, in a free life, in a light life, in a life where you, you, you won't have not even as close as many arguments and fights and problems and insecurities. And like it's, I mean, I can, what I can do is kind of compare my life mm -hmm. before understanding this and, and, see how it goes deepening the understanding and how freer from all that I am. That, that I can do that because I, I've been through this, but if you have never been, if you don't see this, if you don't understand this, it's, it's kind of your, it, that's why it's like, just, you have to take a kind of a leap of faith, mm -hmm. you know? And to like, yeah, I want this prevention from and, and, all, but, all this stress. Yeah. And there is this, I said it always wrong, Gat Gaushalia, the no bullshit detector. <laughs> I always said the bullshit detector. Yeah. The no bullshit detector that we have built in. The mm -hmm. human, the, you feel that there is truth. Probably there is the, the faith as well, because it's com there is something compelling, even though you could go into a storm and not believing it and 
But if you feel that it's true, then it somehow does something. Yeah, it's it's there is there has to be something which decides if something is is yeah. true or not inside of us. Because yeah. I mean, we just have the feeling if we agree or disagree, but we're not actually stopping and reflecting and thinking if we agree or disagree. We just have that, you know. Oh, that sounds true. That doesn't sound true. We yeah. we kind of have that, or that sound, you know, it's there's something that's understanding this that mm -hmm. knows truth. Yeah. yeah. And that's why they're principles. It's underneath opinions. Mm -hmm. It's it's really this waking up to the water as a fish. To you can't see it until you see it. Mm -hmm. And it's, but at the same time, it's because sometimes. Um, it can sound magical or mystical or, you know, soup or like exotic or, you know, <laughs> um, I don't know. But it's the most mundane thing in the world. Yes. It's ordinary. It's so simple and ordinary. And it's, mm -hmm. it's just this relaxing into. And, 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 and that's why sometimes people say like, like, the how-to that we were talking a bit about um, a few minutes ago. It's like, why isn't there a how-to? Because uh, one of the ways people talk about this is like, you're searching for yourself kind of thing, you know? Oh, I found myself or whatever. It's like, okay, if you're looking for yourself, who's doing the searching? Mm -hmm. you're never going to find yourself because you're the one that's looking. So you're already there. I mean, there's, it's just that realization. It's just that penny that drops that it's like, like if you stand up, try and take a step towards yourself. You can't, if you're looking for yourself, you're not gonna find yourself because you're that which is looking. Yeah. And, and once you realize all that, once you like, and you start exploring and, and realize all that, it's kind of like, oh, it's, it's here, it's now, because that's why people say a lot about presence. It's like, it's right here, it's right now. Like freedom is right here, right now. Infinite possibilities starts right here, right now. Everything is right here, right now. Yeah? You are the here and now, which is, which the now which is timeless and the here which is spaceless. Mm -hmm. huh? I don't know, I just think it's cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I I'm always putting myself into the shoes of the people out there like what the hell are they talking about you know and it's okay this guy's in brazil what the what, what what's this guy from brazil coming online just talking <laughs> this crazy talk <laughs> <laughs> exactly exactly yeah but i think it doesn't matter if you're if you're confused by what's being said or if you're understanding something or not um really there i just yeah it's the pointing it's the pointing to the space mm -hmm. in which yeah yeah and it's the it's the freedom of that space it's the well-being in that space it's the peacefulness yeah, in that. And people just have to just have to hear one thing. Yeah. And recognize the truth. And one thing that we're saying. And that's enough. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we've lost Leah. I think we should just take a drink of water. <laughs> she's just left us. <laughs> left us. Yeah, she's like, oh, I have to go. Goodbye. This is boring. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> I know all about that. Yeah. So what's what's coming to me, Robin, is like, you know, you you talk about this with people in companies and organizations and people leading organizations and teams. Like how how in the heck does this conversation land with them? Like what, what happens there? Because it just seems like an odd conversation to have in, in, in that context. Like what is your experience there? It's very interesting because people are people. <laughs> and like you've got like, it, we make up this differentiation of like, oh, there's people there, those, those kind of people and these kind of people. And I can, you go into companies, you've got like all kinds of people, like in anywhere. Yeah. So there are people that are, are more skeptic. There are people that are really into this. There are people that are, I mean, that are going to be, I don't know, cynical towards it. There, I mean, you've got everything, but I think for everyone there's, a, and it doesn't have to be something related to business or not, because what we're talking about is just how our mind works. And it doesn't care if it's like in your personal life in your business life, or it's just the way it works. And, and everyone just likes the, the release, the, the freedom. And, and it's really interesting because sometimes people think like, oh, this has to be serious. And then there's like this heavy weight and like the conversation and it has to be heavy. And it's really interesting. Like, you know, when you go into a business and it's like this, oh, the seriousness and like, we have to, we have to take things seriously. So put on your serious face and let's pretend we're grown ups because I have a theory that grown ups don't exist. <laughs> and like, <laughs> And, and there's, there's all this, but in the end, everyone just really, really wants to be comfortable in their own skin. Yeah. They just want to be at ease in their own skin. And there are people that they try to achieve this through power and control. Yeah. And the more power and control they accumulate to get this, and build up their ego and build up everything, the bigger the fall. And I've seen some terrible falls from these high places because they have this illusion of like power and control. And yeah. But when, if something that they have to have in control goes wrong, it just collapses their whole world. Yeah. Or you can just go the opposite direction, which is just like, releasing the, the the control that you don't have and just like that doesn't mean you're 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 you become apathetic and you're, you you don't care about stuff and you won't get involved i think it's the opposite i think you you just you're freer to dive into everything and mm -hmm. and 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 just dive in and and having this nice and and carefree experience you know it's just this this easiness in in life so like and and so when you're when you're like truly at ease with yourself and truly comfortable with yourself and you're like really comfortable in your your own skin and i i, I think i shared this once before like i i spoke with an enlightened guy once and he and I, we were discussing like what is the description of enlightenment yeah like spiritual enlightenment or whatever and he said it's um he heard it from one of his teachers or whatever and it was um to live with an unblocked feeling with the whole body so just like that that easiness and that flow and comfortable in your own skin and and you become intolerant to your own bullshit as yeah. well so you're just like totally at ease and and people when they are around people who are at ease, who are comfortable, they, they start like saying, oh, I, I can be at ease as well. 
Mm. And when you have that in a team, it's just like it's magical what can be accomplished and how things flow. And it's not, and it's like win, 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 because people are feeling better, the leader is feeling better, everyone's at ease, not only in their business life, but in their personal life too. And then results come in an easier and nicer fashion. So it's it's also good for the company. Mm. I mean, it's like, and like, and shit's gonna happen. Yeah. It's like problems will arise and so but when you're in that space it's like it, it's 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 a game changer you know it's mm-hmm. just like it's 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 not even fair <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah 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 it makes me um think of how we started our mastermind robin do you remember i think that was like when was that? The end of last year, 2019? I was I think it was like in the middle of your last year. Like... Yeah. Robin had like stumbled across this um thing. I think it was called the 12 week year. Do you remember that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was this thing and um this, it was like all the rage also in the in the internet community at the time. Yeah. And uh, it's just the whole idea, get more done in 12 weeks than you would do in a whole 12 months of a normal of a normal year and it's like yeah. very systematic with all these checks and balances and studies and mm. I don't know whatever and um, yeah. I just was really it just piqued my curiosity and I, yeah. I reached out to, to Robin to just have a chat about it and then we got onto the the mastermind together just like what this is kind of cool let's just meet every week and see you know what we do and what happened yeah. was like we just kind of settled into that easiness without Mm -hmm. having talked about it. And what we would end up doing was instead of like, all right, what are you doing in your business? What am I doing in my business? Let's strategize. Like, what is the technique that you're using to blah, 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 get clients, get reach or Mm -hmm. whatever, you know, the thing is. We would just be like, so like, what came through you last week, right? Mm -hmm. Like, Mm -hmm. and, and, and just rounding back to that idea of the space, just being like, in total easiness in this space of potential things just show up that you feel interested to do compelled to do um curious to look at and in the easiness and without subtracting all the unnecessary programs Mm -hmm. the chatter in the mind that says you can't do that it's risky no if you do that you're not gonna other people are no like subtract all that like when all that's subtracted don't subtract it when it's subtracted like you don't have all that fearfulness and all that insecurity going on then you're just free in your business or whatever you're doing to just see what came through you last week and that was so beautiful to me because I've never had a more enjoyable experience of being in business than in this last year and a half from that space of potential with that feeling of easiness. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's what I hear when you talk about that, Robin. Yeah. Yeah, I I love the way you, you described it. And it's just this, It's, it's just this transparency with yourself, like your, this honesty with yourself, this like, it, I was thinking, I mean, this has probably been like my worst financial year ever. And, and I was like, you know, sometimes you get into like that uh, I don't know, money feeling or whatever. Mm-hmm. And it was so interesting because I had this realization, it's like, I, I love doing this. I'm going to do it anyway. So who cares? <laughs> yeah. this, this is what I like doing. This is what I'm going to continue to do. This is how it's going to be. So it doesn't. And, and it's just this lightness. It's just this easiness. It's just this. Mm. It's just that I, 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 I enjoy 
I enjoy, and that's the thing. I just enjoy it. I, I, I let myself enjoy it kind of thing, you know? It's just the, the way it is. Yeah. It's so fluid. And, and, it, and it's just, okay, so I don't have to think about that anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's gorgeous. Robin, I think we're going to wrap up this session and let you go back into your day. What time, what time is it do you guys have over there? It's almost 3 p.m., quarter to three. Quarter to three. Before you go, I wanted to tell people that they can see more of you. And so we're going to talk about that right now. So okay. <laughs> those of you who are joining us late or in the middle of our programming, I guess if we're having a TV <laughs> program, we've been, we're going for three hours tonight. So you might jump right in on the middle. Robin is one of our speakers on the My Secret Life Summit. And um, you can join that summit for free anytime, anytime when you see this video, whenever you sign up, you'll be able to get on the very next day, the videos will start coming into your inbox, actually already today, because we give you some pre-kickoff uh, interviews with Leah and myself. And Robin talks about his secret life. So in the My Secret Life Summit, we interviewed 21 people who were hiding something from the world. And um, it was because they felt like something was wrong with them. Or some speakers talked about life having a secret that they found out. And Robin was one of those people who thought like everything was cool in his life. How could it get, how could it get any better? And it got a, enormously a lot better, like way better. And um, that interview is so worth watching. So if you wanna join that, the URL for that, and maybe Vili will post that in the comments right now is mysecretlife-online.com. And um, yeah, you can get on there right away. And Robin, where can people connect with you online if they want to work with you, talk to you, send you an email, whatever? Yeah, you can send me an email at uh, robin at robintaffin.com. And that's R-O-B-I-N-T-A-F-F-I-N.com. And my website is robintaffin.com. I'm on, on Facebook. You can find me there as well. Well, wherever. I'm, I'm sure if people want to find me, find me they'll find me. <laughs> they'll definitely find you. And Robin has this um, cool, are you guys still doing the Instagram um, meetups? Are you still already still so active over there? Yeah, yeah, we have, uh, my, my company in Brazil is called Jazz. Mm -hmm. It's J-A-Triple-Z dot I-N, we use three Zs. And we have Instagram and we, we, we do things like that. I mean, we, we have a podcast in Portuguese as well, where we, we have conversations with business leaders here in Brazil. And um, we've had some really interesting, interesting conversations. We'll, we might be doing some interviews in English soon. Uh, I'm, I'm looking into that. But if you speak Portuguese, then you <laughs> might want to check that out. <laughs> Very cool. I'm always trying to convince Robin to make things in English for my personal benefit, but for <laughs> one, he's not quite so sure if he wants to always do that. Yeah, I'll, I'll start doing like, uh, and I'll even have like, this is for Shalia. <laughs> this is for my one person who's listening to this in English now. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's so cool to hang out with you today on the conversations. I'm, I'm used to getting you all to myself, and today I shared you not only with Leah, but with everybody else <laughs> listening in so thank you so much for that oh i always love these conversations too so like whenever you want to have them i'm, I'm glad to do it so cool leah do yeah. you have anything to say before robin takes off no it's just a pleasure as always i mean it's it i had to let out the cat and then go to the loo and I took Vilja with me actually sorry Vilja and <laughs> so that's why I was not kind of all the way into it but I just love mm -hmm. what you said and I really like the way you're pointing and it's out of this unshakable state mm -hmm. of this not thinking yeah. about thinking anymore just living and that's so I think that's the whole point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you you stop it. discussing like about life and you just live it. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So true. 
and the party is in life and not in your head anymore. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Robin. Say hi to Donnie. She's probably around the corner. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye. Yeah, it's just, it's the way we do business is the same way as Robin described it. And sometimes it's, as Robin said, it's so light, it's so easy, it's so cheerful that we, that we don't dare to speak about it. You know what I mean? Mm. So the opposite of, what the noise outside is telling, how difficult and hassles and and just to let people know that it's possible. And mm. yes, it's true, it could be a year with less money, mm. but it could also be a year with a lot more. Mm. And it's always a year with more or less. Yeah. But what really changed is this whole story about this kind of years. And we don't say we follow the fun. We don't. I mean, we do. We, we do have a lot of fun. We have a lot of fun. <laughs> but <laughs> we, we have a lot of fun. We have a lot of fun. <laughs> We follow the energy, this obvious next step, and not what we think we have to do, but we follow the thing that we really have to do. Yeah. And that's not always the thing we think it is. It's almost never the thing never. we think, <laughs> <No>. actually. <laughs> yeah. and, and not to care about what we what the noise is telling the noise mm. outside and inside yeah but to really start to see and trust because you see that it's it's there and it unfolds and it's just beautiful and it frees up this space for to live Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And it's always surprising. It, it, it is. Yeah. Like I remember it used to, you know, thinking in my mind, this is what I need to achieve in my business or in my life. Right. So it's like, this is what I need to do and where I need to get to. And then it putting it in front of myself, like a carrot on a string and a stick. Mm. Right. And then just chasing after it. And thinking if it doesn't look exactly like that, then I'm not gonna be okay, right? Because mm. I made my okayness dependent on some sort of outside mm -hmm. circumstance or situation. And not even realizing I was making my world so small, mm. yes. you know, with just this one little idea of how things need to be when there's this infinite possibility of how it could be and that's what happened for me Leah like going into that space it's like I don't know what's coming tomorrow in our business that we do and it's so fun to watch it unfold it's so fun to be surprised by it and be like what how did how is that the thing that's coming next right mm -hmm. it, it's um it makes things fresh and fun and isn't it, we really are able to experience it because we're not chasing the gap, mm. but yeah. being here in the now of, oh, okay, uh, potency, uh, retreats, uh, totally human, uh, whatever shows up. Yeah. And being able to be fully present and aware and in it. Yeah. And not chasing but it would be. Absolutely. I, mm. I literally started calling this before we even got together. I started calling this my now business. Mm -hmm. Literally 
the unfolding in the moment, present in the moment of my business, like experiencing it now, experiencing everything good now, yeah. not when that's reached, not when I get there. Mm. It's so different. Yeah. yeah. It's really but, cool. Like, we've got actually the next guest is all about now. It is. And if you don't mind, like, I would love to take like a five minute biological break. Can you hang in there while I, while I, I I'll be right back. That's fine. I'm going to be with you. Pro is there someone watching? I probably, really, I can't hear you anymore. I have to switch. Ich muss mein um, Ohrstöpsel wechseln. Yes. Ah. <sighs> It's fun, and I mean, it, it is long, but it's really nice to just have these conversations and to be with you, even though I can't see you, I, I feel it. I saw there are kind of like 13 people in the room with us, and it's, yeah, it's like hanging out in the salon. Mm. The room together, even though it's just virtual. I don't know if there were any questions. Ilya, did you see some questions? Maybe we would have time. And the other thing is, I say it again, you can win the My Secret Life package tonight. And you just have to comment or write something in the comments. And then you're in the game. In the game. And there is a chance. So if you want to participate, just go for it. Yeah. So that's what I have to say. And I'm having another cookie. And it's a cinnamon star, and it's the cookie my son uh, loves the most. I I like it, but it's not my favorite one. I don't know. So <laughs> it's like talking to myself <laughs> mm, because. Mm. I just can see myself. And so I talk to myself in the mirror. Shelia, it was quite fun because I talked to, to myself and I ate the cookie and talked to myself. So now you're back again. Was it good? It was, yeah, it was okay. I don't know if Dicken is already here. Don't, um, I don't see anyone. Oh, wait, just... Uh... No, I only see myself and you and Vilja. Mm -hmm. I'm going to open up my pretzel really quickly. Just one second. I'm going to. Mm -hmm. I know Marlene. Now I see the comments. Marlene says, we always talk to ourselves. Yeah, I, I'm not sure. But what we do is we listen often to ourselves and we do talk to ourselves on the, yeah, oneness level. <laughs> the one in, the, the one in you the, is the one in me and so on. Actually, yeah, that's a pretty cool thing to see. It's sometimes a bit strange, but that changed everything for me. Mm -hmm. So if I know Dick and he'll be sliding in on the last minute. Yeah, I think so too. He likes to come he exactly will. on the dot. Oh, there he is. <laughs> <laughs> mm, we're gonna let him. Um, Dick and...
Yay! Hello. Hi. <laughs> we were just saying, like Dickens gonna slide in um the dot on the yes. top. Of <laughs> <laughs> How are you? Doing great. Doing great. I love this time of year. So, mm. Yeah. Did Koizy decorate the 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 thing behind you, or did you have some part in that? No, we both do it together. Really? We've got all kinds of decoration up everywhere. Mm. There's our tree. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. Yes. Tree. We have a crash that we found in Jerusalem that we brought back that's made out of wood, olive wood. Oh. Yeah. Lots of Santa Clauses because I see Santa Claus as a symbol of uh, generosity of spirit. Mm. You know, unconditional giving. Our lovely, true self. <laughs> lovely way to start, actually. <laughs> You're already there. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're live, Dickon, in case you didn't know. Oh, hi, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> we're on hour three of a three hour live stream. Leigh and I have been, we, we, yeah, yeah, we've been doing extended live streams. So we are. Filling ourselves up with calories. We, what's we called it? Cookies, coffee, and conversations. In reality, it's just so we can keep ourselves fueled through three hours. Yeah. What a nice way to do it. <laughs> Leah, would you like to introduce Dick? Yes. Oh, we, are, we were just looking forward again and again to have a a conversation with you, Dickin. And we are so glad that you came. Dickin Bettinger is, um, was a, a student of Sydney Banks for uh, almost 40 years. Am I right, Dickin? Well, 23 years with Sid. Uh, oh. And he died 10 years ago. Uh, so 33 years ago is about, I've been a psychologist for over 40 years. Oh, that's the thing with the 40. <laughs> <laughs> I, I knew, and 50. I know, there and the no numbers get that high. <laughs> as well, no, with the marriage. 53 years. Yes. So, yeah. Yeah, a very experienced man in life and love. Hmm. So, That's very nice. Just a pleasure to have you with us. And Dick Bettinger is actually the first one we put in the summit, My Secret Life, as a speaker, because you just, for us, you have a light and deep and beautiful way to speak about these three principles that mm -hmm. all about we speak and we we wanted to participants to just have a feeling even though probably they do not understand it at the beginning but to mm -hmm. just feel that that there is a truth in it and that's why you were our first speaker on the summit. Mm -hmm. And it's very lovely to have you here on the summit. Um, you are speaking about this transition, how you felt before and after. You came across this understanding. And today it's kind of all about the same things but with different words again and yeah yeah the idea was just to spread this hope and lightness and to talk about what we see and how it how we 
feel another kind of freedom or hope in this time through or with this understanding. Yeah. We just would love to hear what, what you would say to that. Hmm. I'd like to start with the metaphor of light. Because this is the time of year when people all over the world celebrate light. In all different cultures, all different religions, all different traditions, there's a universal recognition of light as a symbol of our true nature, as a symbol of love, as a symbol of peace. Light brings warmth and nourishment. So I'd like to talk about the inner light because Thirty-three years ago, when I met this man, Sidney Banks, he had gone deeply into that inner light. And he realized the oneness of life. And he realized what is meant by our true self. And he came back from that experience. It's interesting that people call that experience enlightenment. But he believed very, very deeply that everyone has this light within. Because he had experienced it so deeply and directly. It wasn't a belief, it was a knowing. When he had this experience and he came back from that experience, if you will, he realized that this life, formless life energy dances in the form to create everything that exists. And he discovered what he called the universal principles or the most foundational forces in life. Three ways of talking about the same formless energy dancing into form. And he called it universal thought, universal consciousness, universal mind, because that's the source of life for all human beings. And he said that as any person realizes what's true about life and about human beings, those insights bring us back to this light within. It brings us there. Now, I'll see if I can explain what I mean by that. <laughs> so we can think of Universal mind is the intelligence behind all of life that knows how to create and operate life. Without that, there would be no life. Without that, there would be no human beings. Without that, there would be no source of life, no source of our life. Universal consciousness is what allows us to be aware of what's created. And universal thought, divine thought, is the creative potential that creates all the varieties of human experience. Everything we experience from agony to ecstasy is created by this gift, this gift that allows us to have experiences. So we have a loving thought, we feel loving. 
We have a sad thought, we feel sad. We have a stressful thought, we feel stress. In other words, the source of all human experience are the principles. Only the energy behind life has the power to create life itself. Nothing in the world, the form, has the power of creation to create. This is what Sid realized. It's an inside-out job. <laughs> Inside being formless, creative energy that takes form, right? Creates our mental activity, which consciousness turns into sensory experience and feeling, so we can experience life. What a gift. He called them divine gifts. So, we all think. And as we get older, we spend more and more time thinking about life. And sometimes we get so caught up in thinking that it covers up the light within. We get very serious. We get upset. We think about things. We feel an underlying tension a good part of the time. And then every once in a while we fall out of all of the thinking that we're doing. We become really conscious and present. And then for no reason we start feeling better and getting new and fresh thinking. So I've shared this understanding with people for 33 years. And when people begin to insightfully understand, oh, wait a minute, I'm sitting here thinking about something that's not even happening right now. It happened in the past or it's an imagined future and I'm thinking about it and I'm, it's creating this feeling in me. And we sort of wake up to the fact that we're the thinker. <laughs> and guess what? When we really see it's our own thinking doing it, we're not anxious about the test we're going to take. We're not upset about what somebody said. We're anxious because we're having anxious thoughts. We're upset because we're having upsetting thoughts. And when we realize that, Here's the beautiful thing. When human beings drop the thinking that creates their tension, stress, or upset, they wake up, become more present, and then the old thinking goes away because it's just condensed energy. It melts. What's left is presence. We're awake. We're alive. We're in the moment. No past, no future, which is just thought. And in that presence, there's a knowing. We just have common sense. We know what to do. We know when to eat when we're hungry. We know when to sleep when we're tired. We know when to say things and when not to say things. Common sense. So... Sid would say, as you begin to realize that we live in the world of thought, you begin to take more and more responsibility for your thinking. And quite simply, you start dropping thoughts that create tension, stress, and upset. Why would I hold on to it? Why would I keep thinking about something if it makes me feel worse and worse? I love seeing people catch on to this. Even little kids I've worked with, four or five years old, can realize their thinking and feeling and that they're just feeling their own thinking and they can come back to the now and in the now everything we're thinking settles out and we feel more peaceful. Peace of mind is very simply 
a psychological state where the thoughts that were creating tension, stress, and upset fall away, quiet down. Peace that passes understanding. We can't think our way to peace. At times everybody experiences peace when we're fully present. If we don't understand that's our natural state, we'll blame that peace on what's happening around us. <laughs> you could be in the most beautiful, peaceful, loving situation. I've done that many times and get caught up in my thinking and feel tension, stress, or upset. So the peace isn't in the situation. But isn't it interesting that when people's minds clear and they feel peaceful, they say, well, I feel peaceful because I'm on vacation. I'm peaceful because I'm with a friend. I'm peaceful because the sun is out. But none of those things have the power to create. None of them. <laughs> okay, here's, the, here's what I love. This, this is a season to celebrate light and the coming of light. My wife's birthday is December 22nd, the darkest, longest day of the year, but it's heralded as the day when the light returns, the coming of the light. Now, it's a metaphor. When we're caught up in thought, our life can seem quite dark and heavy. And when we fall out of our thinking, we lighten up. Let me read you my favorite quote from Sid Banks, because it's relevant to this. And I think it's, it's not only a summary of his whole teaching, but I think it's a summary of all true spiritual teaching. It transcends culture and differences and because universally people have had the experience of having insight into the nature of thought, having insight into the nature of what Sid called pure consciousness, awareness free of conceptual distortion, free of personal thinking, pure consciousness, no judgments. Dalai Lama says love is just the absence of judgments. No judgments. Seeing life as it is. Not through positive thinking. Seeing life as it is. A smudged window that you wipe clean and you can see more clearly. It's not distorted. Clarity of mind, peace of mind, same thing. I love this Christmas season, this holiday season, Hanukkah season, celebration of the light and Buddhism and Hinduism. And it's the light is one of the oldest metaphors for our true nature. You walk into a dark room, you light one candle. And the light fills the room. Light overcomes darkness. You go outside and hold that candle up and the light from that candle will radiate to infinity. Because it's just energy released. If you were on another planet and had a sense and enough instrument, you could measure the light when it reached that planet. This is our true nature when we lighten up. Light is the bearer of peace, joy, love, compassion, harmony, caring. When people die, we say, go to the light. Now we're saying, 
while people are still alive, you don't have to wait until you die. The heaven Isn't that good news? Mm -hmm. Isn't this good news? So here's the quote from Sid. This was from a talk any of you can listen to. It's it's you can stream it for free on SidBanks.com. And it's from a lecture series he gave called The Great Illusion in the Long Beach Lecture Series. Okay, here's the quote. All right, we're caught up in thought all the time. And it's a very dark, small world. Concepts reduce life to very narrow little parameters. All right, like if you have, if you're with your partner or your spouse or, or a friend and you are holding on to concepts of love, you're nowhere near what love is because love can only be experienced when we let go of all concepts and then it's given to us freely. You start feeling closer to that person. So here's how Sid says it. You have to go beyond all concepts. That blew me away. When I had an insight, it was like, oh my God, wait a minute, did he say all? <laughs> even my precious spiritual concepts, even, even concepts of love, even, What's it mean? What's it mean to go beyond all concepts? Do I ever do that? Is, or is it just so ordinary we don't even see it? Can I see that tree without any labels or concepts? Can I see my wife without looking through an idea about her and what she is and what she's saying means and can I be fully present? All right. it's, it's the most ordinary thing in the world, but if we don't see it, we don't know it. And if we don't know it, we don't know to go there, in a sense, when we're having difficulty. Most adults, when they're feeling tension, stress, or upset, don't go to the quiet within. They think even harder about life. <laughs> it's a misunderstanding. It's been around for centuries. And Sid says, you're going in the wrong direction. Turn around, look within, which just, it doesn't mean look within your body. It means let go of every idea, belief, and concept. Just for a moment, just temporarily. You can always pick up your computer again anytime you want to, but you're not meant to live in your computer. All right, so get familiar with this other world, not the world of concepts and ideas and beliefs. Not another world, it's very different. Just, you have to go beyond all concepts and you will find it in the stillness of your mind. Here we, here we are at peace. People experience peace of mind when they're not caught up in their own story about themselves or life. It's ordinary. It's available to anybody. Sid would say, we're caught up in thought, we're thought away from the now, and in the now there is a peace because you're not caught up in and influenced and engaged in concepts. Just in that moment. And you will find it in the stillness of your mind and the quiet chambers of your mind when you go from the known, the intellect, to the unknown, which is paradoxically a deeper knowing. Mm -hmm. It's a knowing not of the intellect, it's a knowing of wisdom. And he's going to talk about that right now and in connection with this metaphor of light into the quiet chambers of your mind when you go from the known to the unknown, from the physical to the spiritual, from form to formless, right? When you hear 
beyond the word, beyond my words, beyond your words, beyond all ideas, beyond all words, right? Into this quiet silence beyond the words, stillness, peace. When you hear beyond the word, an inner light goes on. Now this is a metaphor. We, an inner light goes on and it brings out inner knowledge and wisdom. Spiritual intelligence before the contamination of human thought. This has been happening our whole life, often with us being unaware of it and unconscious. We haven't had insight into the truth of this. There is a space within, metaphorically, every human being that if we can take one little step beyond our personal thinking into the now, into pure consciousness, presence, this light goes on. Yeah. Now, the reason why light has been used for centuries, I think of people sitting after the discovery of fire, man, you'd sit around all night in your cave gazing at this fire because there wasn't a hole and there weren't movies or, <laughs> you know, there wasn't all the entertainments. So they're just sitting gazing into this fire and then our personal thinking quiets down when we're fully present. And we start feeling the inner warmth of peace, of contentment. And in that feeling, there's a sense of a realization of the truth that we're all connected, that we're all one. So when I get really quiet, I feel closer to anything in front of me. Anything, anybody. I go for a walk in the woods. If I'm in my thinking, I can feel all kinds of tension or anxiety. I don't experience beauty. Right? I don't. I wake up to the fact of thought, come back to the now. My head clears. The trees start looking beautiful. The birds sound beautiful. Our senses come alive. Pure consciousness. Our senses start singing, which is the foundation of enjoyment. You can be at work, drop out of thoughts that create stress, and start feeling a deeper sense of connection to your purpose at work, to being of service to other people, right? To this feeling of uh, enjoying satisfaction, job satisfaction. We've seen where we've gone into companies and people learn about the principle of thought and begin to fall out of thoughts that burden them, yeah. that they always report enjoying their work more. Isn't that interesting? We enjoy our kids more. We enjoy our spouses more. We enjoy our friends more. Because our senses come alive when we unburden them. And then these deeper feelings emerge of love and compassion. And, you know, they talk about when we meet somebody and we fall in love. We fall out of our personal thinking, get fully present because we're gaga. <sighs> and then and then the heart light 
shines through. Um, light has been used, it's, it's considered the oldest psychological metaphor of, we have our sky mind that has weather, which means we feel our thinking. And when the weather clears as it does when we're present, it's blue sky, clear sky, open sky, spacious sky. These are all words that have been used by spiritual teachers for centuries. Right? And then the clouds part, blue sky, then the sun shines through with warmth and nourishment. When I don't feel close to my wife, I know I'm caught in conceptual judgments and limited thinking and ideas. And when I fall out of my head, you know, this is a metaphor, we were only talking metaphors here, fall from head into our heart. And I feel closer to her. The other day, for the first time in a long time, I got really caught up in my thinking and I raised my voice really loud with my wife and both, both of us were sort of shocked. <laughs> and it was like, oh my God, did it, oh man. And I realized I had gotten lost, which all of us can do. Any, we can all do, it's normal. But I recognized it and I knew that I, it was just a thought problem. I had gotten caught up in my thoughts that create upset. And those thoughts seem, when we're caught up in them, they seem real. When I let go of them, they just dissolve. They don't even exist. Right? That's why Sid called this talk the great illusion. <laughs> right? When the illusion falls away, you know what's left? Light, peace, joy, love compassion, our true self, the recognition of our oneness and connection to life, what some people call our innate health, yeah. our well-being, that deep in this well is pure being, inner light, love. Go to the light. So let me finish this quote. <laughs> Be grateful for the spiritual wisdom you have found that has changed your life. Because it's been happening our whole life, whether we know it or not. When our head's clear, those are times when we like listening to music. That's when we enjoy music. If you're worrying, I guarantee you won't even hear the music, nonetheless enjoy it. My wife liked one composer. I thought it sounded like an ongoing traffic accident. <laughs> so I had a lot of judgments in my thinking about it. And I'm going, oh my God, how do you, this is horrible. It's like, it's like torturing cats. It's just screeching and screaming and it's chaotic and it's, She goes, I don't know what you're talking about. I love this. See, different thoughts, different thoughts. Now, I didn't have to, but if I want to learn to appreciate something that I don't like, I have to let go of my old thoughts, my judgment, so that I, they can be replaced by new thoughts. So we went to a dance performance and all of a sudden, they're dancing to a piece composed by this composer. Very repetitive. Over and over music. And I get into my judgments. And I'm not liking or appreciating this at all. And then I realize I'm thinking up dissatisfaction and judgment. I'm doing that. No one else is. 
It's not coming from the music. It's my thinking. And it brought me back to where I don't know anything about anything, back to the now, which is the only place we can find enjoyment. It's the only place we can find peace, joy, love, creativity, beauty. And all of a sudden, this is how wisdom works. It reminded me of something I read in the program before the performance that someone said if during this performance just watch the heads of the dancers <laughs> now that's a different and new thought for me because <laughs> i'm listening to screeching cats which is means my own thinking i'm not watching i'm not even watching the dancers i'm just sitting there going oh god how long is this one gonna last and really and I fell out of that and I saw the dancers, their, their heads moving and how they were all right together and it was like this wave in the ocean with the seaweed and all of a sudden it's like this beautiful thing. And, it, and again, I was surprised and shocked because wisdom always brings us new and fresh. And it knows what to bring that's helpful. If you're in a horrific situation, it'll bring you clarity so that you can know how to save your life, when to run, when to call the police, right? It's wise, it's called the wisdom, it's our true nature. It's built into this presence, into this feeling energy of life. Okay. Be grateful for the spiritual wisdom you have found that's changed your life. When we're really grateful for the fact that we're being lived and that we're connected to the whole and that we're connected to love and wisdom, it does something for us. So he says, it's a feeling. When, when we fall into this, some people call it the heart space. I like that. Fall from your head into your heart, into this spaciousness that's not limited by any concepts or beliefs. Wide open. It's a feeling. You're looking for a feeling. Don't listen to the words. Look for a feeling. So let's come back to light. When I, this is something I've been no, just noticing, this is just Dick and talking about, because I love sort of seeing what I can see. When I, I'm recognizing that when I'm not holding any thought in mind and I'm fully present, no matter what I'm feeling, that feeling is just energy and without labels and judgment, there's nothing wrong with any feeling. There's no waiting for a better feeling. That's an idea. That's ego. Always wanting more and better. Never this. So always dissatisfied. So I can feel upset and when I'm fully present and not holding, my mind opens up and then spiritual teaching says that's when your heart opens up. Now what that means is what I'm feeling, the hurt, the anger, the upset, I can feel it begin to open like a candle light radiating. And I had the insight, every feeling is love in disguise. Every feeling is nothing but light. Physicists say all of life is just light. Darkness is just condensed light. Pure energy condensed. And when we take the container of thought concepts away, it's like taking a basket off of the candle and the light's always there within waiting to shine forth. 
I've worked with people who have spent their life in prison. When they begin to wake up to the fact of thought, rest in the now, their light shines forth. They become friendly, kind, considerate, compassionate even. And it shocks them because they didn't know that was in there. Nobody told them. Nobody said, as Sid Banks said to me and shocked me, he said, you have as much wisdom as anyone on this planet because we're all connected to the same of life energy that's full of this intelligence, full of this knowing. It's so simple, we don't see it. When we're driving a car, if we're caught up in thought, we're having accidents. We're, you don't want to be with a driver who's completely caught up in some thought story. We have to get a certain degree present, and when we're a certain degree present, without thinking, we're making life and death decisions. That's wisdom. I woke up in the middle of the night last night worrying about something, and all of a sudden it occurred to me, oh, wisdom will take care of this. Because I'm finding out over and over again, as Sid would say, in that feeling, he said it's just a nice feeling. When, when we don't hold a feeling down by thought, when we uncover it, it reveals itself. It's true nature. And it radiates. And he said, in that feeling is wisdom. You just know what to do. I've been in family situations where people got really upset. I got upset. And all of a sudden I realized I'm not in that heart space. I'm in my head. And I drop in. As Sid would say, we're always a thought away from the now from freedom, peace. Being at peace, even when you're feeling upset, you can be at peace because you have no judgment about it now. It's an unconditional peace, an unconditional joy, enjoyment, unconditional love that embraces everything because it's as a psychologist from Stanford says, it's, it, the bigger feelings mean we connect with something bigger. Right? So anytime we fall out of the personal ego and we touch this space that's the energy of life itself, literally, we start having bigger feelings. And a big feeling can contain a little feeling. So I can be upset, fall into the now, and there's a different feeling of presence. And what I'm learning is when I'm present, my feeling is opening. And when I'm present, my mind is open, my heart is opening. I have all the common sense I need to be kind to people, even if I'm enraged. Because that light of wisdom shines through any thought storm as soon as there's a little opening. So I live in the northwest of the United States, and, and the weather, they always say, today there will be sun breaks. I love there's that metaphor. And human beings have sun breaks too. We're so upset and then we get present. And then this light shines through. So I was telling you the other day I got upset with my wife. Actually, I had upsetting thoughts that I didn't see as thought. And I was sure that I was right about something. And then I woke back up out of the illusion of thought into the now. Here's what my common sense did. Now, I did not plan this. I did not think about it. Had nothing to do with my intellect. I've never done this before in my life. 
I dropped to my knees, crawled across the room, put my head in my wife's lap, and I said, oh, great one, I am unworthy. <laughs> and she burst out laughing. And then I had tears in my eyes, and I gave her a big hug and said, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. I got so caught up, I can't believe it. We had a good laugh, and it's over. It's over. So there's a space within, which just means beyond our thinking, that's full of light, full of We empty. I studied the mystics, and they all talk about emptying, which means emptying of personal thought. And then there's this infilling. We feels like we're filling up with nice feeling. And then we give it away. That's kindness, love, service, being compassionate when we see other people caught up in their thinking, not knowing it and suffering and acting out of that. Forgive them for they know not what they do. Yeah. Kind of deal, you know, because we all do that at times because we get lost. Innocently, innocently. So the good news is no matter how lost we get, we can wake up and return to the light and that light will literally guide us toward how to move through whatever circumstance we're in, no matter how dangerous or difficult or challenging that situation is. It's no match for wisdom. It's the intelligence that knows how to create the universe and helping you just navigate a little problem in your life. It's like nothing, nothing. Universal mind. Right, is the intelligence that creates and governs all life. And when our minds are quiet, it shines through as the light of wisdom, the light of love. The heart space, the heart light, the being, I love the phrase being light hearted. Mm. Has whole new meaning, deeper meaning to me. What it means, even when I'm upset, to wake up to our natural state of lightheartedness. You know what seriousness is? Holding ideas. So light, that inner light, brings peace. And it's uplifting and nourishing. So it says that's what nourishes our souls. That's what it means to be renewed in spirit, made new again in spirit. And that brings hope, because no matter how bad things get, and I understand, they, I know they can get really bad, really bad that the hope is there's a light within us that will uplift us and guide us no matter what circumstance presents itself. No exceptions. I found that to be true in unbelievable circumstance. I used to say wisdom. Once you realize about mind, you learn that wisdom has your back. And then my friend Elsie Spittle took it a step further and said, dig in, wisdom is your back. <laughs> it's not separate behind you. It is you. You are that. So... So that was what came to me last night and this morning as I started off reflecting on peace and hope and then it somehow it kept coming back around to light. 
each one of us within is one of these lights and each of those lights are connected to one cord the same source and that cord connects to one source of energy so mind consciousness thought there we are again another way of talking about it well Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Holidays, Happy Festival of the Lights. May we all celebrate the light coming back to illuminate our darkness. There's nothing left to say. No. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome, Leah. You both are very, very inspiring. And I have loved getting to know you over time and seeing how you keep opening up and letting your light shine through. And you are both lights to this world as we all are whether we know it or not but it's just nice that we can learn something that helps us in the uncovering process because you don't have to worry about the light the light that's already there so we just have to get out of the way so true yeah so grateful for that and I'll give it over to Shelly. I see her. It wants to speak. Yeah, so let, we've just got seven minutes on the end of this three-hour live stream. Maybe Dickon will stay with us for another seven minutes to say goodbye. We, we just want to thank everyone who listened in this evening. And maybe you're listening on the live stream. Maybe you're listening to the recording. Um, but we just wish for you that you take away much more freedom in your heart, peace in your heart, hope for yourself, for the world, and really our intention with this series, and we'll continue next week on Friday, so we hope you'll join us then in the morning in German, in the evening in English, yes. is we just wanted to, wanted you to see the light and, and feel your light in these times, and especially mm. A lot of people have experienced 2020 as a particularly difficult year in the history of their life. And we want to send you off into 2021 with a renewed sense of hope and love and lightheartedness. And mm -hmm. we so much want for you that see that can be your experience. So thank you for being with us tonight. Hopefully we'll see you next week. We so much enjoyed talking with you, Dick, and thank you for sharing your, when you come to us, we, we bring all that you've seen. And, and, and we don't take that lightly because, you know, I'm 46, Leah's 43. We're somewhere what they call midlife. You're 75, I think, is that correct, Dickin? 73, let's 73. not rush this. Oh, let's not <laughs> overdo it, sorry. 
but you know it's just something about that that thing that life experience and we have it all in us for sure no matter no matter what age we are it's not the thing but it just it just is something that you bring when you come and 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 i really don't want people ever to feel bad about feeling bad you know is that the more we touch this space the more we're able to be kind to ourselves and others and to see how normal it is at times for us to get caught up in thinking and then it seems real and true and and we have a difficult time me too me too and then at some point we sort of wake up again and let it all go come home touch this space and we start getting renewal from within rather than always looking for that on the outside but it's normal as can be to have difficulties and have rough times and i do too as I'm just not so hard on myself about that anymore. So when my wife gets caught up and has a rough time, I'm not so hard on her. Mm -hmm. You see, you see. So it's it's not feeling good all the time. It's mm -hmm. learning how to be open so that any experience can flow through you like it did when we were babies, right? And so it's not a matter of feeling bad when we feel bad. It's a matter of understanding that it's created from thought, which gives us hope because if it's just thought, if you leave it alone, it passes. It always has. It changes at some point because our thinking changes. So I just wanted to add that in just so, because often at this time of year, there are people who, who are just not feeling good about things and life and the world and we can get caught up in that thinking and get really discouraged and disheartened and that's understandable too that's understandable we can we can love ourselves when we get caught up we can love other people who get caught up and lost and then by having compassion for them that's how we can help them seeing their innocence and oh yeah that was me yesterday right i understand that so i want to add i want to add that i think that's very important in this discussion so that people don't ever walk away feeling bad about feeling bad right. you just get you keep listening for people who know where to point you within and what that means, because that's the only place we're going to find what we're looking for. I'm not going to find it out in the world. I'm not going to find it there. I've looked. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. I've looked, you see. And that kind of brings me to the jumping off point. So if, if you don't want to wait till next Friday, we want to hear more of Dickens speaking. Billy is going to post the link to mysecretlife-online.com. Today, Dick and we opened up the My Secret Life Summer as an evergreen concept. So anybody who hears this video can get on it today and it starts right away. And Dickon is the first speaker of 21 speakers who are all pointing wow. in the same beautiful direction. Yeah. So if you don't want to wait till next week, go ahead and get on board and you can watch seven days of looking in this direction together with us until next week on Friday. And we wish you a wonderful day. Or no, stop. <laughs> yes, yeah. We've got the gift. Oh, the giveaway, the giveaway. Yeah. Sorry, I forgot. Okay, so, and, and spread the light. If you've got a friend or a relative that doesn't feel that good or is lonely mm -hmm. or has time or is in the lockdown alone at home, it was incredibly helpful for me, this understanding. I could hear it. All the mystics pointed in the same directions. Mm -hmm. Religion does. I could hear it with this language and the way Sid Banks pointed mm. um, in the direction of truth. 
it may be you or someone you love can hear something and it, it literally one little insight one little hmm can change everything and we have a winner <laughs> william um, kicked uh, off the this generator and it's um, marita posthumus you won the my secret life summit and Vilja will reach out to you and if you already have it then you also could give it away as a gift for example so congratulations to you <laughs> great that you were live with us and posted something and thank you to all of you guys that you just spent three hours or 10 minutes or one hour with Shelia and myself and our beautiful guests of tonight. So see you hopefully next Friday. Friday thank you Friday. so much. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Happy holidays. Bye, Bye. Bye. Bye, Leah. Bye, Shelia. Mm -hmm.